Good evening. Welcome to live streamed worship with St. James Episcopal Church in Skinny Atlas, New York. I am Becky Kerper and we are in my living room and my uh, worship team, my worship partners this evening are Catherine Teasdale Edwards and Marie Hughes. They have joined me on Zoom and you will hear their voices a little bit later in the service. We do have a bulletin that is on St. James website at stjamesscan.org or if you have a prayer book at home I would invite you to turn to page 116 and we will begin with the opening sentences that you will find there. If I say surely the darkness will cover me and the light around me turn to night Darkness is not dark to you, O Lord. The night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light to you are both alike. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Dear friends in Christ, here in the presence of Almighty God, let us with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins so that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. And if you have a prayer book or a bulletin, I invite you to say the words of the confession with me. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. And if you are following in the prayer book on page 117, we will say the invitatory in response. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. And on page 118 in the prayer book, we'll say together the post Hilron, which is O Gracious Light. O Gracious Light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. So Catherine Teasdale Edwards is going to be uh, leading us in the readings this evening, and she begins with Psalm 32, which is found on page 624 of the Book of Common Prayer, if you are following in the prayer book. Happy are they whose transgressions are forgiven and whose sin is put away. Happy are they to whom the Lord imputes no guilt and in whose spirit there is no guile. While I held my tongue, my bones withered away because of my groaning all day long. For your hand was heavy upon me day and night. My moisture was dried up as in the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not conceal my guilt. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. Then you forgave me the guilt of my sin. Therefore, all, of, all the faithful will make their prayers to you in time of trouble. When the great waters overflow, they shall not reach them. You are my hiding place. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with shouts of deliverance. 
I will instruct you and teach you in the way that you should go. I will guide you with my eye. Do not let like horse or mule, which have no understanding, who must be fitted with bit and bridle, or else they will not stay near you. Great are the tribulations of the wicked, but mercy embraces those who trust in the Lord. Be glad, you righteous, but re and rejoice in the Lord. Shout for joy, all who are true of heart. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The first lesson, Galatians chapter 6, verses 1 through 10. Live creatively, friends. If someone falls into sin, forgivingly restore him, saving your critical comments for yourself. You might be needing forgiveness before the day's out. Stoop down and reach out to those who are oppressed. Share their burdens and so complete Christ's law. If you think you are too good for that, you are badly deceived. Make a careful exploration of who you are and the work you have been given, and then sink yourself into that. Don't be impressed with yourself. Don't compare yourself to others. Each of you must take responsibility for doing the creative best you can with your own life. Be very sure now, you who have been trained to a self-sufficient maturity, that you enter into a generous common life with those who have trained you, sharing all the good things that you have and experience. Don't be misled. No one makes a fool of God. What a person plants, he will harvest. The person who plants selfishness, ignoring the needs of others, ignoring God, harvests a crop of weeds. All he'll have to show for his life is weeds. But the one who plants in response to God, letting God's spirit do the growth work in him, harvests a crop of real life, eternal life. So let's not allow ourselves to get fatigued doing good. All at the right time, we will harvest a good crop if we don't give up or quit. Right now, therefore, every time we get a chance, let us work for the benefit of all, starting with the people closest to us in the community of faith. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. I invite you to say with me uh, the Magnificat, which is the Song of Mary. If you have a prayer book, it's on page 119. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The second lesson is Luke chapter 11, verses 42 to 46. You Pharisees are in for trouble. You give God a tenth of the spices from your garden, such as mint and rue. But you cheat people, 
and you don't love God. You should be fair and kind to others and still give a tenth to God. You Pharisees are in for trouble. You love the front seats on the meeting places and you like to be greeted in the honor, with honor in the market. But you are in for trouble. You are like unmarked graves that people walk on without even knowing it. A teacher of the law of Moses spoke up. Teacher, you said cruel things about us. Jesus replied, you teachers are also in for trouble. You load people down with heavy burdens, but you won't lift a finger to help them carry the loads. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. I invite you to join me in saying the Nunc Dimittis, which is found on page 120 in the Book of Common Prayer. It's the Song of Simeon. Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Well, I, um, tonight I wish all of you had these texts in front of you. They are, um, we, we could spend a lot of time talking about them. There's a, just a tremendous amount here. And I um, very intentionally chose a couple of unusual translations uh, that Catherine read. The, the Luke was the contemporary English version and the Galatians was from the message, which is a, um, a very fresh and kind of a shocking um, paraphrase of, of the Bible uh, by Eugene Peterson that often just helps us to hear uh, older, tr more traditional language in a new and fresh way. And I wanted to say a little something about each of these texts. The Luke um, was, the, was the woes when Jesus said to the Pharisees and to the scribes, uh, woe to you for these are the things that you do. And he says, you, you tithe spices from your gardens, but then you cheat people and you place heavy burdens on them. And basically, I think in summary, what he was saying was that you are keeping the letter of the law, but not the spirit of the law. That it really isn't about checking off boxes and saying, well, I do this and I do that and I do the other thing. It really is how, how we live our lives and the state of our heart. And then what the fruit that is born from that or the expression of the way we live, what's in our heart and the, in the way we treat other people, which is kind of a wonderful lead into to the, to the Galatians where the message starts off by saying, live creatively, friends. Um, you know, what, what do you have? What are the resources that you have? What are the opportunities that you have right in front of you? And take advantage of those. Um, he says, make a careful exploration of who you are and the work you have been given. Don't be impressed with yourself. Don't compare yourself, which I think is a, I, I would guess m most of us have more trouble um, comparing ourselves to others and feeling like we don't measure up than we do um, being impressed with ourselves. But he's, he talks about taking responsibility and doing the creative best that we can with the life we've been given. And um, I know that I, struggle personally right now with feeling kind of overwhelmed by all there is to do in the world, the magnitude of the work that we have in front of us, the, the bigness of some of these challenges um, that have to do with what we see in our culture and the pandemic and um, racism and uh, just in general, it's, it can be kind of overwhelming. And I wanted to share just a little quote with you. Um, I'm reading Kamala Harris's autobiography right now, and she talks about the fact that when she first became um, the, the DA in San Francisco, that she came up with a to-do list 
and I personally love a to-do list, I'm all about that, um, and that she had short-term things, medium-term things, and long-term things. And the long-term things she described as taking um, as long as it takes to get them accomplished. And she said, um, you don't add the intractable problems. And I thought, oh, I love that. I, I feel like we're just surrounded by intractable problems right now. You don't add the intractable problems to the list because they are new but because they are big. Because people have been fighting against them for dozens, maybe even hundreds of years. And that duty is now yours. What matters is how well you run the portion of the race that is yours. And I, I, that was so helpful for me to think our, our job in our day and time and this today, this week, this month, isn't to solve the problems of the world. It's to run the portion of the race faithfully that has been given to us. And she talked a little bit about her mom who um, was a breast cancer researcher and that certainly is an intractable problem. Um, and she said that her mother wasn't fixated on that distant dream. She focused on the work right in front of her. And she actually said this, focus on what's in front of you and the rest will follow. This is the spirit we need to bring to building a more perfect world, recognition that we are part of a longer story and we are responsible for how our chapter gets written, which, which makes it more doable, doesn't it? I, my work is my chapter and to think about what is right in front of me today, who is right in front of me today, what has God given me in this particular moment one more thing that um, that uh, I, I want to touch on in this um, passage of Galatians that I, I think is very much a part of, of where we are today. He said, be very sure now, you who have been trained to a self-sufficient maturity, that you enter into a generous common life. So we, we're very self-sufficient in the United States. I think it's part of our, our DNA. It's part of um, just who we are as a people. Um, but what, what Paul is saying here is in your self-sufficiency, be sure that you tend to the connections and the common life that we have, the community that we live in, and paying attention to um, tending to the people who are around you. It's not just about how well am I doing, but it's about how well are we all doing. So the, the last thing that I think this scripture points us to is how do you do all that? You know, how do you stay on track with all that? How do you, how do you live your life according to the spirit of the law and not the letter of the law? And really where it begins is um, with one thing that Paul says, but with some of the stuff that's in the psalm. The one who plants in response to God, letting God's spirit do the work in him, harvest a crop of real life. And so where all of this, our ability to do this comes from, it comes out of a response to God. We have to begin with God. And so we begin by knowing as the psalmist did that we've been forgiven. We begin by knowing that God has um, been faithful to us in, a time, in times of trouble, that God has been our hiding place and has um, surrounded us. And so uh, whatever it takes to um, begin there every day is really important to be reminded that of all that God is and all that God has done for us so that we can live this kind of life that is creative and generous and other-centered and um, doesn't get discouraged by the magnitude of the problems. All of that begins in our relationship with God. So I think it's most appropriate that after we sort of reflect on all of these texts, we then return to the creed and to the prayers and to, to uh, connecting directly in our relationship with God. So if you have a prayer book, I would invite you to turn to page 120 and we will say together the words of the Apostles' Creed. 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The prayers tonight can be found starting on page 121 in the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with, with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Tonight we're doing intercessory prayers A. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. At this time, we invite those on Facebook to post your prayer request and those on Zoom to unmute and speak your intercessions. I want to mention um, a couple of people in particular, Sue Spaulding, who had surgery this morning, we are holding in prayer, and Roy Wooten, who is um, a member of Molly Spaulding's extended family. Uh, that's a lot of um, health issues going on in one family, and so we, we hold up all of the Spaldings in particular. Um, healing prayers for Mickey and Mike. I also, um, we're really blessed to have Catherine Teasdale Edwards with us tonight, and um, she is an educator in the Syracuse City Schools, and I um, would invite our prayers for all people who are involved in education, including the parents and the students, uh, the teachers, the administrators. This is just an amazingly challenging um, time for people in education, and so important. I want to pray for my St. James family and give thanks to them for upholding us in all of these uncertain times. It's Kathy Buck's prayer. I think go ahead, Marie, and I'll I'll just add any that I see as they come up. Prayer for the day the day. Lord, we pray that your grace may always proceed and follow us that we may continually be given to good works through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We have a prayer request for Mose and Bonnie and uh, for John Rohde, who is at St. Saint Peter and Paul in Auburn and um, his first vestry meeting in his new parish. Uh, we do hold you up. In prayer tonight, um, John. A prayer for our nation. Grant, O oh God, that your holy and living giving spirit may so move every human heart, and especially the hearts of the people of this land, that barriers which divide us may crumble, 
suspicions disappear, and hatred cease, that our divisions being healed, we may live in justice and peace. You, O oh God, have bound us together in a common life. Help us in the midst of our struggles for justice and truth to confront one another without hatred or bitterness and to work together with mutual forbearance and respect. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A prayer for an election. Hey, hang on a second, Marie. A happy oh. birthday to Nancy Graham. I did mean to mention that. Uh, I was a really big birthday for Nancy, and we are just all so thankful for her presence in our midst. And I think I said St. Peter and Paul. It's St. Peter and John yeah. in Auburn. So I apologize for that um, slip up. And, and we do, we celebrate you, Nancy. <laughs> a prayer for an election. Almighty God, to whom we must account for all our powers and privileges, guide the people of the United States in the upcoming election of officials and representatives, that by faithful administration of wise laws, the rights of all may be protected and our nation be enabled to fulfill your purposes. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. A prayer for mission. O oh God, you manifest in your servants the signs of your presence. Send forth upon us the spirit of love, that in companionship with one another, your abounding grace may increase among us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. I'm thinking I don't have any particular announcements about things that are coming up, except I do want to say that as we... Uh, move into the second half of our month of community service that um, we and many others have just been incredibly blessed by the outpouring of love and care from so many. We were, um, we got a car loads of stuff for the rescue mission and uh, the Samaritan Center. There's another collection that's taking place this coming Saturday and um, we were able to send, I think, 21 boxes, care packages to our college students. And we've started getting emails from them saying that several of them, at any rate, the package arrived in the middle of the most stressful day or the most stressful week of the semester. And it was just a huge blessing. So thank you to all of you who have been so generous and giving and doing exactly um, what was described in this letter to the Galatians about being generous in our common life. Um, that's just a huge blessing. Thank you so much. And if you would join me, those of you who have the prayer book, um, on page 125, we will say together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Bless you all. And I think I got the number wrong. We sent 25 boxes to college students. It looks like someone, somebody on my staff is always correcting me. Uh, it's a good thing because I need a lot of correction. And John, bless you in your meeting tonight. And uh, have a good evening, everyone. This is wonderful to worship with you.